Hello friends, good day to you all. Today we'll be looking at the transfer of thermal energy. Now, what is heat energy? It is a form of energy that's moved from one place of body to another due to temperature difference. Heat is transferred by three modes, which are conduction, convection, and radiation. Now, conduction has to do with solids, uh, convection, liquids and gases, and radiation in vacuum. Let me spark your curiosity, those of you who watch Nigel White channel. Have you ever wondered how these animals are filmed at night? And have you also wondered how breast cancer is detected in women? Have you heard of thermography? Thermography is a form of science in which infrared cameras is used to detect heat radiation in blood and tissues. DITI, Digital Infrared Thermography Imaging, is employed by scientists to detect the motion of objects at night. It is also used to carry out a thermography testing to detect the heat radiation in homes and to see how it can be powdered to reduce such heating effects. All things are made up of molecules. When these things get heated, their molecules absorb heat energy. This means that the molecules are absorbing the heat energy and the molecules are moving faster. When the molecules move faster, the temperature of the object increases. Conduction occurs mainly in solids. There are two types of conduction. We have the molecular vibration and free electron diffusion. Note, conduction is not the main form of heat transfer in liquids and gases because their molecules are spaced further apart. When heat is supplied to one end, the molecules at the other end start to vibrate more vigorously. In the process, they bump into neighboring molecules. And in doing so, some energy is transferred to the neighbor. The neighboring molecule gains energy and starts to vibrate more vigorously. The cycle continues until heat is eventually transferred from one end of, end of the solid to the other end. The free electron diffusion. This form of conduction takes place only in metals, as only metals have free electrons. The electrons are freed from the molecule when heated and they travel towards the cold end. At the cold end, they collide with the molecule, therefore passing all their energy to the molecule. There are two mechanisms of conduction in solids. For metals, is a free electron diffusion, while for other solids, we have the molecular vibration. Now take note, it's a vibration. It does not involve the actual movement of molecules as the thermal energy is transferred from one molecule to another until it reaches the cold end of the solid. Conductors are materials that can conduct heat energy readily. Why non-conductors or insulators are materials that cannot conduct heat energy easily? Examples, we have plastic, we have glass fiber, we have air and water. These are examples of insulators. For conductors, we have melters. Have you ever wondered why you feel a cold sensation when you try to walk out of your home barefooted? It is because the floor of your house is a good conductor of thermal energy, and as such, it absorbs heat energy from your feet when you are walking. Also, insulators are poor conductor of heat energy. That is why they are made use of in the handles of cooking utensils. The ceiling of most houses are padded with good insulators to prevent overheating and help maintain a good temperature, at least a convenient temperature in most homes. Convection occurs in liquids and gases. It does not occur in solid because the molecules are not free to move around. How does convection occur? For instance, in gases, when you heat a gas, the hot gas rises up while the cold gas goes down until equilibrium is reached. This process of convection occurs in land and sea breezes. That is why at night, the land is cold and the sea is hot. The reverse is, is the case during the day. Also, a liquid is not heated from the top due to the movement of convectional currents. When you heat a liquid from the bottom, Hot liquid from the bottom rises to the top and replaces the cold liquid that also goes back to the bottom. The, circles con the circle continues like that until equilibrium is reached and the whole liquid attains a thermal equilibrium at a particular temperature. 
Now the third mode of heat transfer is radiation. This mode of heat transfer does not require a material medium. For instance, thermal energy from the sun reaches us on it via infrared radiation. Take note please that hotter objects radiate heat energy more and absorb thermal energy less. On the other hand, cold objects absorb thermal energy more and radiate thermal energy less. This is because the amount of energy absorbed or radiated is as a result of the temperature difference between the body and its surrounding. Now, this process can be enhanced with knowledge of modes of heat transfer. On a sunny day, for instance, it is advisable to put on a white cloth than a dull black cloth. This is because bright and shining surfaces are poor absorbers and emitters of thermal radiation. Black and dull, and dull surfaces are good absorbers and emitters of thermal radiation. For instance, also, in the refineries, the tanks, the storage tanks, are painted with bright silvery colors. Have you ever wondered why? This is because the bright silvery colors of the storage tanks are intended to prevent thermal absorption of thermal energy, which could cause a rise in the temperature of the tanks, that is, prevent heat gain by conduction. The inside of a teapot has a bright silvery color to prevent heat loss by radiation. In the western parts of the world, there's what we call a greenhouse. A greenhouse is a building that is heated with solar radiation such that it can stay warm even during cold days or winter. Light from the sun passes through the glass roof to heat plants and the ground inside the greenhouse. These objects then emit infrared radiation which is absorbed in the glass roof and as such the temperature is kept constant for a long period of time. A vacuum flask is designed to prevent heat loss in a number of ways. For instance, the vacuum prevents heat loss by conduction and convection. The sievert surfaces reduces heat loss by radiation. The cap and base are made of good insulators to reduce heat loss by conduction. This is the end of today's class. You can go through this lesson over and over again to make sure you fully comprehend all that has been said. Meanwhile, you can use the question and comment box to leave any question you may have. I'll see you in the next class. Bye for now.